Hey everyone, it's Heather Hammerstedt. I'm the creator of Holist. I'm so stoked to talk to you today about emotional eating, food addiction, and how to just crush it for good. <laughs> First, a little bit of reality. This is my house, real life. So my guess is my dogs are going to bark. My kids and husband are probably going to come home earlier than they said they were. And for some reason, there's a bunch of flies in here. So I'm probably going to be like swatting them away the whole time. <laughs> I'm probably going to make some mistakes and, you know, stumble. This is real life. Uh, I really like to talk with my hands and move around when I talk and give lectures. So all that, bear with me. <laughs> uh, that being said, thanks so much for being here. Mostly because I'm thankful for you that you've decided to jump all in on you. Because if you're here, that means that you realize you're in pain because of emotional eating, that you are valuable enough to invest in fixing it, and that you are worth getting the energy, sexiness, control, the promotion, the family fun, the self-confidence, and the long-term health that comes along with getting rid of emotional eating and the triggers that cause it, all with a side effect of your waistline being where you want it to be. But a few things I want to say before you watch the training. This training was made for a pretty specific person in mind. Someone who's sick of complicated, restricted programs that fall apart when the realities hit your life. Someone who's sick of awkward social situations where there's nothing you can eat that's actually on your diet. Someone who's sick of choosing between breaking your diet and starving when you travel. Someone who's trying to fit in ever more exercise in a failing attempt to burn off the inches or keep it off. And someone who's super sick of starving yourselves and being constantly hangry barely losing the weight anyway, and then finding yourself just eating things you know don't serve you the rest of the time. This is made for someone who knows that emotional, emotional eating is holding her back from personal fulfillment, professional skyrocketing, and being the self-confident, badass woman that she knows that she is. Someone who is ready for action and not just consumption of more shiny object information. Because we all know that we're the squirrels chasing after information, right? Because nothing happens without action. Not information, action. Nothing. So is this you? I think it is. <laughs> I made this training for you. Um, I know you because it was me. Um, and uh, I know that this emotional eating is something that we all struggle with. This is also a description of countless women who have joined Holist to crush these issues once and for all. To become the naturally thin woman who uses that new confidence to chase the soccer ball with the kids, to jump on the trampoline, to stand up in front of a room of men and speak her mind, who has the energy and the endurance to get things done she wants to do for a fulfilling life. And by the way, you know that feeling you just got when I described the new you? May have been excitement. When you think about that woman in the mirror with these emotional issues in the rear view mirror, uh, you know, it may have been fear, and I know the fear of your chest and your stomach, the, oh, it isn't me, it can't be me, but guess what? That's exactly okay to be feeling. It's normal. This is your internal resistance to change. It's totally normal. It's a sign that you are on the cusp of something big, and you should charge through it because <laughs> nothing happens in our comfort zone. Okay. So what to expect today? We're gonna to cover food addiction, gut-brain connection, uh, analyzing our hunger signals, and strategies to recover from this once and for all, and so much more. So grab a piece of paper, pause me if you have to, come back in, take some notes so that you can apply this when we're done. And just so you know, there is nothing for sale here today, it's just information. You also should know that throughout the week, you're going to be getting a few more emails with more training, strategy, and examples, as well as that kind of template that we use here at Holist and a surprise goodie. So don't just watch and read. Do something about it. You got to promise me that. Otherwise, it's just not even worth watching. Okay, so let's get into it. I know that if you're here, you are that badass woman who has so much in her to serve the world and take back the world and that you deserve the confidence in yourself and the self-capacity to feel that you can tackle this last problem, emotional eating, to get you to your best you. But you struggle and you fight and you self-condemn and you get stuck because of emotional eating and because of food relationship issues. I know 
it's one of the reasons why we gain weight, even though we feel like we're eating healthy all the rest of the time. I know it's a reason why people suffer with a lack of confidence in the way that they move and the way that they feel in their clothes, right? The way they fit. I know it's a source of major pain, major embarrassment, and really making people doubt their own self-capacity. I know that it makes us less certain in our professional and our personal relationships. I know that our weight makes us feel as if we've been unseen in these professional relationships. Many of us even turned over for promotions or projects because of the judgment of the way that we look and what that means that we're capable of, which is bullshit, but it is what it is. I know that when you feel a lack of confidence in your ability around food, when you feel a lack of control around your food choices and weight and the way that your body feels to you, that your sex life suffers, your family life suffers, you're not as willing to take on the world with your children, run around and chase grandkids. But you know what? I am here to show you that you can fix all that. And I'm not going to say it's easy, but you can fix it. Because as I always say, this is not about willpower. It's about skill power. And that's because our bodies are smarter than us. They were built for thousands of years of staying in an energy balance so that you would survive. So why would you think that restricting calories was going to do anything besides have your body make you eat, make you eat unhealthy things that the food industry made for this purpose? so that you could get the most satisfaction, but also the most fat um, and fuel into you as efficiently and often ending up with us eating things we know we shouldn't be, feeling that lack of control and gaining weight even when we've been making the right choices the rest of the time. I know that we can fix this because I've done it with a ton of others. So let me tell you a little bit about me so you know why you can transparently trust me. You know, like I said, this is real life. Um, This is my house. This is my family. (laughs) I'm no snake oil online health guru. I'm an open book for you, and then we'll get into the training. So I'm Heather Hammerstedt. I'm a boy mom. (laughs) I'm a wife. Um, I'm a food lover, a skier, a hiker, camper. I live in Idaho, land of big rivers, rafting, backcountry skiing. I'm also a board-certified emergency physician with 15 years of clinical experience and 16 years of health coaching and culinary medicine experience. And I have a secondary board certification in lifestyle medicine, which uses the evidence behind food and sleep and exercise and mindset and mindfulness to prevent and reverse disease, which we all intuitively know is what we should be paying attention to. And as I've discovered, when applied correctly, these lifestyle medicine skills also have a secondary side effect of weight loss and weight management, or what I'd rather think of as weight wellness, whatever that means for you. I put together a transformational blueprint coaching program, which helps high performing women crush their weight issues. That dark cloud over them, often the last thing that they feel doubt about, crush it for the final time in 12 weeks with mindset mastery, adaptive biology, and supportive accountability. If this is something that you want to learn more about, reach out because I do free strategy calls to help women get clarity around where they are and strategy around what the next steps are. But that's not what we're here for. I just want to let you know where I was coming from and why you should trust this information coming from me, even though I'm on the internet. (laughs) So for now, we're going to talk about emotional eating and where this comes from and some strategies for you to start applying today. First, let's reframe emotional eating for what it is, food addiction. Then we're going to do a quick introduction to the gut-brain connection Then we're going to analyze your hunger cues in the context of your history and biology. And then we're going to do some mindset and practical strategies, way to rewire your brain, effectively get to your most confident body and mind with no products or tricks. And then coming this week, an exact copy of our emotional eating blueprint to your email. So let's get after it. Food addiction. What is this? Food addiction is the idea that a person can be addicted to food. And this is the way I'd rather think about emotional eating. It has recently been gaining increasing support because of brain imaging and other studies that we've been able to show that compulsive overeating actually affects the pleasure centers in our brain. So it's been experiments in animals and humans, and I'm super nerdy and I won't get into all the details, but they do show that for some people, the same reward and pleasure centers of the brain are actually triggered the same by drugs like cocaine and heroin 
as they are as food, especially the food that I call highly palatable foods. You know what these foods are. Highly palatable foods are foods rich in sugar, fat, and salt. Like addictive drugs, highly palatable foods trigger feel-good brain chemicals such as dopamine and, you know, in our heads. Once people experience pleasure associated with that increased dopamine in the brain's reward pathway from eating those certain foods, they quickly realize they make them feel good. It reinforces the need to eat them again and again and again and again, <laughs> right? Even though the body isn't using that for fuel, but for buffering some other need, some other lack of reward, some other emotion, or just because it's hormonally haywire, haywired because of decades of how we've been using food. For some, giving up such foods proves as difficult as it may be for an addict to give up alcohol or drugs. The reward signals from highly palatable foods may override other signals of fullness and satisfaction. And as a result, like, people just keep eating. Like I said, like when they're not even hungry. So let's get back to what addiction actually means. Addiction means doing something, anything, over and over again that does not serve your interests. Doing it over and over again, despite the fact of it's having bad effects on your family, life, work, body, health. Does that sound about right? You see how food can fit in that definition? So compulsive of overeating, food addiction, emotional eating, whatever it is you call it, it's a type of behavioral addiction, meaning that someone can become preoccupied with it while it, while it creates and triggers intense pleasure. But people with food addictions pretty soon lose control over their eating behavior and find themselves spending excessive amount of times involved with food and overeating. Anticipating emotional effects of what's going to happen to me because of this compulsive emotional overeating and still doing it even though you no longer get that same pleasure. And as with other addictions, you can see both tolerance and needing more and more to get the same feeling and withdrawal, physical symptoms of not having that uh, neurotransmitter release. So why does this happen? It is because of that reward chemical, dopamine in our brain that we talked about. And here's the thing that's tricky and so unfair. We know that as our weight increases, dopamine decreases. So this means that as you get more and more overweight, the dopamine chemical in our brain goes down and down and down. That dopamine helps you be happy, satisfied, and rewarded, right? But it's less and less available. With lower levels of dopamine, you can have depression, anxiety, difficulty going through the motions of the practical issues of your life, and you feel the need to fill the dopamine back up. And the way you've been trained or trained yourself to do this, maybe over decades, is with highly palatable reward foods, refined, fatty, sugary. And when those foods are gone, your reward center is all like, oh, I'm down in the dumps, <laughs> right? And it forces you to fill it back up to get that feeling of well-being. And guess what? With what? Highly palatable processed foods. This sucks, right? But what are you going to do? Science. <laughs> Science. It's biology. But it does explain a lot, right? So the good news is that our, as, our weight increase, or as our weight decreases, dopamine increases, so this is only one of the many reasons why people who lose weight find themselves happier at baseline, more rewarded, more energetic. So once again, as I'm always talking to my lifestyle medicine patients and my weight coaching clients, our adipose tissue, our fat, is a hormonally active organ. It's connected to the gut-brain axis integrally. Your failure to control this problem is not willpower. You can't overcome all of this power for biology in addiction because you want to or because you think you are a powerful enough thinker. <laughs> it's skill power. This is about the skills that you need to overcome it, shift your hormones, rewire your brain. If you're here, though, my guess is you know that you need this. And again, this is what we do here at Holist is get through all of this in a way that makes sense, is step-by-step, step, crushes these triggers in your reactions to them, for good. So now that we've talked about food addiction and we kind of have that understanding of where we are now, let's dive really quickly into the microbiome and the gut-brain access. So I'm not going to get too complicated on this. If you're on my public Facebook Curate Your Health group, you know that I talk about this all the time. 
Um, or if you subscribe to my Curate Your Health podcast, you should also be assured that there is a ton of information about this coming. So there's way too much to cover here, but it is connected to food addiction. So really quickly, I want to mention it so you at least are aware it's a thing. There's a ton of new research coming out all the time. This is a brand new area of study that gut bacteria, literally your colon and small intestine have trillions of bacteria in them, both good and bad, contribute to brain function, directly affect obesity, they influence your mood, they influence your hunger hormones, and also the dopamine motivational and reward system that manifests in addiction. I could talk about this for hours, <laughs> and I have <laughs> in speeches, so maybe I'll come back and do another training for you just on that. But when it comes down to um, is this, if we aren't feeding the gut bacteria the nutrients they need to stay healthy, it seems that they can directly and indirectly mess with our energy metabolism, our energy expenditure, the energy we're putting out um, with our immune system. So think about cancer and autoimmune disorders with our sleep and our skin and our hair, bugs, <laughs> um, with our cardiovascular, with our women's health systems. You know, the, 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 the data coming out is pretty astounding. Um, but in turn, the bacteria in there mess with our brain enough that they are affecting what we are choosing to do for ourselves, or maybe even more clearly affecting what we put into ourselves to feed them through lots of biochemical processes and changes in appetite, neuropeptides in the brain, and all sorts of stuff. So basically what I'm trying to say is that what you feed you is feeding your microbiome's gut bacteria and telling your brain what to eat, changing your health feature and your weight. Just another example that food is medicine. Whew. Okay, now we're getting into it. Next thing we're gonna talk about is hunger, how to analyze your hunger cues in the context of your history and biology. So what's hunger? You're all, what, uh, WTH, <laughs> what are you talking about, Hammerstedt? When I'm hungry, I'm hungry, it is what it is. It's not that simple. Nothing is with our bodies. So I believe that there's biological hunger, body, psychological hunger, brain and emotion, and social components of hunger and cravings. So let's start with the psychological. We've talked a ton about emotional eating and food addiction. This is probably at the root of more of the cravings than anything else, whether it's fear or anxiety or anger or loneliness or uncomfortableness or upsetting memories. Uh, it's a natural tendency to want to buffer those feelings so we don't feel them as rawly. Is rawly a word? <laughs> Close enough. Um, so it's just our nature, right? Who wants to feel pain? Some people buffer with alcohol, some with exercise, some with sleep, some with drugs or tobacco. Most of us buffer with food, often because our parents rewarded us with food. Those of you who are parents, keep that in mind. <laughs> I'm entirely sure my husband only learned how to swim because of the donut shop next to the Y, and we're still working through that. <laughs> so um, filling voids, buffering emotions with dopamine surges that you get from low nutrition foods, this is exactly where you are right now. Like, it is what it is. What do you need to do? Find the base of that feeling. Find a way to feed and buffer it with something other than food. This is essential. You gotta find the base of that feeling, work through that feeling to the thought and the circumstance that caused it, and fix that. Don't just buffer it with food. So this is real work though, right? If this is work within you, within the family, then you need to do serious thought downloads and self-cognitive behavioral therapy work, then you do it. If you need a formal therapist, then do it. I'm not saying this is easy. I'm saying it means you need to work, which you may not need to you may not know how to do on your own, but there are, you know, folks like us who can help. In our whole U8 wellness program, my coaches and I talk a ton about how to min minimize these triggers and how to find the base of them. And to be honest, it's as much as the conversation as the food and sometimes more. Um, we use techniques from the coaching world, positive psychology, mindset work to really dig in and rewire our brain patterns to get to the results that we desire. And we're gonna to get to some of those strategies in a little bit. The next thing is social hunger. There's also something else that sounds the same like as emotional eating, but I like to call it mind hunger. I think mind hunger is basically the situational memories or habits around food. 
And this is pretty hard work to get out of because food is everywhere in our culture. It's in your face all the time in the form of ads, restaurants, social cues. Our cravings live um, in sort of like a tapestry um, of visual images in our mind. We don't think about that piece of cake. We actually like see it in your mind's eye, right? You need to put some time between you and unhealthy food stimulants. The more time elapses, the more difficult it is for your mind to create a good image of that stimulus, and then more like less likely that the craving will appear. In other words, the longer it's been since you indulged in that fat fudge sundae, the harder it becomes for your mind to create the image of that gooey ice cream and chocolate sauce, and the less likely you'll be attempt, uh, t tempted by it. Um, over time, those cravings subside, and ultimately they do disappear altogether. There's also the need to create new situations and new experiences and new life around either A, not food at all, or B, healthier food, so that your brain starts to connect with that memory and make a new tapestry. So now the last one, biohunger. So this is what I call hunger that is from biologic processes. This can be real body hunger where you might actually be hungry. Although as my clients know, even that really isn't the real most of the time because our bodies know how to make our own energy from what we've stored. Like our bodies are smart enough to keep us from starving. Um, but also sometimes this can be from just a shift in what your body's using to use for fuel and we're misinterpreting that shift as hunger. Um, but it can also be bioaddictive hunger. So there are biochemical connections and communication between the hormones of emotion, digestion, your fat cells, and the way that they all feed back to tell your brain what and when to eat. And this is often what makes you continue to eat the things that you know you shouldn't, when you shouldn't, even though you know you will get a result out of it you don't want. And that's the actual definition of addiction, right? Crazy. Again, you see how complex our bodies and brains are, like how you could never get through this with just willpower, how like you should stop blaming yourself about this, because this is skill power. You just need the skills to learn and the skills to implement. This is key, action and accountability. And you can do this like so many other people have. Many people mistakenly believe you can curb emotional eating just by breaking the addiction to unhealthy food, but that's really only part of the story. Just avoiding the bad stuff like isn't enough. We need to stop the unhealthful food, replace it with health-promoting, nutrient-rich alternatives. In other words, we need to address the excess of bad foods while we simultaneously correct the lack of what caused the bad craving in the first place. We know that sugar and flour are addictive and it's causing the hormonal issues that we have, the hormonal dysregulation, not just of obesity, but of disease. It's also stripped of many of the micronutrients that we need and you need that, right, for your gut bacteria. But if you eat a well-rounded whole you food plan, you will have those micronutrients available, stabilize your physiological processes, calm your body and mind while doing so. Eating intentionally and scheduled commitment and avoidance of cheat days is gonna help you along as well. So that's a lot on hunger. Let me summarize your hunger cues and how to analyze them in the context of your life. Emotional cravings. Feel and investigate and work your feelings instead of avoiding them by dulling them by eating or drinking. This may be rewiring thought patterns with serious support and accountability and work. If it was easy, we would all done it. <laughs> Mind cravings, that social hunger. Recognize and repattern your social behaviors to create new tapestries um, of what is associated with what is going on in, around you. Avoid those biological cravings by removing sugar and processed flours and grains, eating an intentional food plan of whole foods, and recognizing that what you are feeling is not necessarily always hunger. It may be just a shift of what your body is using for fuel, and it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. Okay, so we've covered some strategies already, but I did promise you some concrete strategies to say sayonara to emotional eating for good. 
When it comes down to it, it's what I'm always talking about with my clients is that what you need is evidence, education, and empowerment. You need to have a good understanding of the evidence of what is happening in you so you can finally see how your choices are assisting your body and helping or hurting your goals. And to understand that this is not all in your willpower control so you can stop feeling so frustrated and angry with yourself, move forward to work on the skill to the will. <laughs> it's a good poem. My kids would be proud of me. Um, so you need to get the education on what those skills are. It's coming. And you need to be empowered to know that you can do this. Often this is support, kindness, accountability of coaching to force you into action. So if you would have done it already, maybe you would have, right? On your own. Because this is a total lifestyle change and it's a lifelong change, right? This isn't something you do for 30 days and then just go back to your regular life. And nothing happens with consumption of information, right? Only action on that information. <laughs> how many times do I have to say this, right? I'm serious about it. Because how much reading and reading and watching and watching and flitting from one source to another source have you gone through and you're still where you are? So what are those skills that you can act on? Learning how to interpret psychological emotional hunger, the social mind hunger, and the biological real versus bioaddictive hunger. Feeling it, analyzing it, recognizing it. Learning how to receive the sensations from your gut and fat cells to your brain. Analyzing the sensation, but delaying your action to it. Choosing what thought to make from them. And acting on the thought, not the sensation. It's basically delaying action in order to create a discrepancy between what you feel and what you want your result to be and fitting the action in there to get you here. It's your own cognitive behavioral therapy, so to speak, and it's what we do in lifestyle medicine and in coaching um, and in Holist. Next, it's an elimination of added sugars, processed grains, flours, oils, and fats. So instead of, instead of that, you're concentrating on eating a rainbow of whole veggies for diversity, whole grains. This also happens to be the same food that feeds your good gut bacteria to keep the gut brain access healthy for all sorts of reasons besides food addiction and obesity. So plenty of real food, no products, no counting, no bullshit, no shakes, like just stop, just real food, okay? <laughs> um, it's getting the skills to create food that's physically satisfying but still created out of foods that we know feed our gut, feed our body, fuel us, as well as provide long-term health, right? Again, it's all the same stuff. Tasting good, real food, appropriate balance of fat and proteins and unprocessed carbs to keep you full longer so you can work on the why you eat and the when you should be eating in a more settled sense of mind. It's allowing time for food addiction withdrawal to pass. This sometimes can be one week, might be longer could be a couple months. Just realize, realize that it will, it will indeed pass. This too shall pass. Again, this is sometimes where support and accountability are key. You got to be a planning machine. You never make good choices in the moment. So calendars, planning, like several days ahead of yourself and help from coaches. And give yourself some grace. This is gritty, this work but you need grace to do it. Don't expect to be perfect. You're rewiring your brain to undo a lifestyle of experiences, emotions, habits, neurochemical connections. This isn't willpower, it's skill power. You didn't learn to play soccer overnight. You didn't learn to drive overnight. You didn't learn to ski overnight. You didn't learn how to be a badass professional overnight, right? This is skill power. You can't force your body to do something, but you can be patient and you can do the work. The good news is we make 700 new neurons a day in our brain, brain, brain cells. So you have the opportunity to create change in your brain, change the connections between those neurons, and eventually do this subconsciously and naturally. So be patient. See your stumbles as a way to learn what works better next time, and it'll happen. And my last strategy is coaching. I keep bringing this up. <laughs> I strongly believe everyone needs a coach. I have coaches and things, even though I'm a coach, right? Everyone has their own knowledge sphere that they can share with others and hold space for them to grow. 
And the issue here is really why we are eating and when should we be eating and how do we make sustainable change? And this is where the problem comes in. Finding the information you can trust, action that is valid and sustainable and support when it hits the fan, right? Because you have tons of information, you're still where you are. I mean, really, there's so much out there. <laughs> like the information can be conflicting and overwhelming, confusing, and just paralyzing. Information doesn't get your results. Hope is not a strategy. Taking action is. Coaches are what turn all of this information, this entire step-by-step -step lifestyle transformation system into action. They're what keep you going. They're who get you over those humps in the road. They will bring you back to it when you waver. They guide you through every step of the process by shifting your lifestyle bit by bit until you're ready to sustain these challenges without that daily fight and struggle and without them. We all like to work ourselves out of a job. <laughs> if you can't put this into action consistently and solve all those challenges that seem overwhelming in the moment, none of this other stuff will matter. None of it. Coaches understand what you're going through. They know the stuff going on in our minds that hold us back, how to break us through, how to motivate us, customize things to your needs, workshop solutions when you don't know what to do. It's different working with your doctor. I mean, I am a doctor. I love doctors. <laughs> we spent the majority of our lives training to or taking care of you and your family. It's all we care about. The thing is, though, is that your doctor can probably only see you 15 minutes at a time. You see me in the emergency department, like you're lucky if you get me for five. Um, if I'm with you for longer than that, like it is not a good, <laughs> it's not, it's not going well. <laughs> But your doctor in your office probably can only see you 15 minutes at a time. You may only see her or him once or twice a year. They don't have the time to teach you this stuff, nor do they know what to say when you ask because we were never taught this stuff. Unfortunately, we doctors are, are trained in conventional medicine, so we like prescribe and fix. We don't prevent. It's a big flaw that I've worked on to fix in myself through all this additional nutrition, coaching, lifestyle medicine work. Lots of stuff I put my hands up for over the years. But additionally, doctors aren't coaches. They counsel. We counsel. We advise. We don't coach. Coaches aren't there to like tell you prescriptively what to do. They hold a space for you here so you can create your own future under their guidance. Do you understand the difference? So I really strongly believe that coaching is what we're missing in our healthcare system. 80% of chronic disease is preventable. Much of these chronic diseases are reversible with lifestyle change. The top 10 global killers are lifestyle preventable. Getting a little bit on my like want to solve the world <laughs> uh, bandwagon here, but this is, is this what we're doing right now? Are we preventing? We're putting band-aids instead of solving the lifestyle problem. We're waiting to treat until after the heart attack or diabetes instead of doing something about it now. Are you okay with that? Or do you want to make a difference? Do you want to curate your health future? So yeah, I'm passionate about using lifestyle medicine evidence to empower with coaching, but also the evidence on how to make those sustainable choices. So my little diatribe is over, except to remind you that if you knew how to do this alone, you would have already done it. Coaching is essential for the prevention of lifestyle-related diseases and for sustainable weight loss through the removal of these emotional eating triggers. So, my lovelies, thank you for joining me and taking this time. I know you're all really, really busy. And I know since you watched this, this is a big issue for you. So to save you a little bit more time, I'm going to send more stuff by email over the next week or so. And that exact copy of our strategy that I promised and I've got a challenge for you. Who doesn't love challenges? <laughs> so um, open up my emails, don't ignore me. Um, for now, if your interest is peaked and you're ready to get out of that self-shame, out of that lack of self-confidence, changing your pant size, getting out of that lack of energy or the yo-yo of energy, out of your thoughts of getting looked over or through because of your weight and your emotional eating, if you want to get this problem done fixed once and for all, energy, confidence, efficiency, sleep, skinny jeans, and a badass sense of control over your health, your future food choices, and launching personally and professionally, 
while showing yourself as an example so that your family doesn't have to go through the same thing themselves? Let's do it together. You know how to find me. Uh, social media at Holist Health, W-O-W-H-O-L-I-S-T, Holist. Basically, whole person, sort of like a cardiologist or hospitalist. We are Holist. Uh, so at Holist Health um, or in the Curate Your Health Facebook group or on the Curate Your Health podcast. That's all free information that you can learn along with us. Or you can just email me at heather at holisthealth.com. I'm always happy to answer some questions for you. Even more exciting though, I had my assistant open up some time in my calendar this week for free strategy and clarity calls for you on this emotional eating and food addiction training, where you can get clarity on where you are now, where you wanna go, and strategies to get you there, with or without us, um, so schedule a time to get on the phone with me right here on this page. You can see that. Take advantage of me. My only prerequisite for the call is that you're serious about change, that you're ready to act on the clarity and strategy that we find for you, and that you are ready to end this lifelong pain of emotional eating and wait for good to get you to the you that you're dreaming of. So three days, I open them up later this week. You're going to get in your inbox a copy of this. You're going to start getting a couple more trainings. I'm going to open up those calls later this week. So open the emails and see when they open them live so that I can get you on my calendar. It's only going to be three days. There's only a certain number of spots. Okay, lovelies. See you later. I hope you enjoyed this training. Now go hold your head up, stand strong. And remember who you choose to be matters. You are valuable, you are worth this, and you are your whole you. Have a great day.